Hi, it's Jay, and welcome back to part two of our complete beginner's guide to farming simulator. First, let me reiterate that in none of my tutorial or how-to videos will I be using mods. I will be making completely separate videos about mods, and you can find these in the mod section. I'm not going to be using mods to ensure that everybody learns at the same rate and everybody is learning on the same playing field. If you want to use mods to change the game and how it performs, that's up to you. But for now, as a complete beginner, I recommend you play without mods and learn how the game works and completely understand the basics. In our last video, we had a basic look at the menu system, the game settings, we harvested a field, we planted a field, and we cultivated a field. Today, we're going to go a step further. We're going to have a more in-depth look at the menu. We're also going to have a more in-depth look at vehicles in the vehicle shop which is where you purchase vehicles and you also repair vehicles. And depending on time, we're going to have a look at AI workers, their costs, and the advanced AI worker menu. If these sound like topics you're interested in, keep watching. Okay, so as you saw from the last video, we are now in the basic menu. We've got a, a farm centered. And you can see we own, as I showed you last time by pressing the X, we own three fields. On the right side of the menu, we have the filters, which tell you the crop types. You can change that. And you can have it show growth so we can see field six is 46 is the one we planted and you can see it's in a growing state field 45 is harvested and field 44 is cultivated ready for seeding you can also then go to the soil composition and we'll get into this more when we look at how to improve yields. But you can, it'll show you things like what fields need weeding, what your fertilizer states are, whether a field needs plowing, and whether or not it needs lime. And then we go back to the main menu, which shows the hotspots around town. I'm guessing just the, uh, the buildings and the cell points. And back to our crop types. Next up, we have the crop calendar. And this shows you which months you can plant or harvest various crops in. So we're in August. So that means we can harvest wheat, which we did. We can harvest canola. And we can harvest oats. It also means we can plant canola, which is what we did in the last video. As you can see, next month in September, we'll be able to plant wheat and barley, still be able to plant canola. And you can just scroll down and see what other crops are available. Right below the um, crop calendar is the weather forecast. We're in August, it's currently 24. Nice weather for harvesting crops or planting them. Right below that, we have the crop sales menu. It'll tell you if you highlight each crop, it'll give you a list on the right that'll tell you what the crops are currently selling for. So 
So, if you want to know when the best time to sell is, this is the menu to look at. Right below, the, and all prices are based on a thousand liters. Okay, right below that, we have our vehicle overview. These are the vehicles and equipment we own on the farm. And it'll tell you how old the equipment is, how many hours each piece of equipment has on it, and what its working condition is, as well as its value, if we would choose to sell it. Next up, we have the overall finances. And we have the only thing we have a cost for so far from the last video was wage payments for our AI workers. That's because our seed came filled with seed and we didn't need to buy any. Plus our tractors came full of diesel and we didn't have to buy any of that. The next screen is the animals screen. We don't have any animals yet. And I would wait till your farm gets established before buying animals because they can be fairly expensive to feed. Now, here's a very important menu right below that, which is the contracts menu. It shows you the other farmers in Elm Creek who want you to do work for them. And it shows you what they are willing to pay you to do work. I highly recommend, especially when you're starting out, doing contracts. And depending on time, we will either do a few contracts today or we will go into contracts in part three. Next, we have production chains. We don't have any production chains yet. And as I said in the last video, we will get into those in a separate video, which will be dedicated to production chains. And this is the overall statistics. Um, as you can see, we played for 55 minutes in the last video. We worked 0.79 hectares. I don't know why it's displaying in hectares when I have the game settings to acres. I'm guessing it's a bug and I'm hoping Giants will fix that in the next one. And then from there, we get into the menus, the game settings that we already covered in the last video. The final at the very bottom is your help menu and it'll tell you the basics of playing the game. It can be a little bit confusing. Like if you look at improving yield, it tells you that if you spread fertilizer twice, you increase the yield by 23% each time. Um, spread lime every three harvests or every three years. If you're using, um, seasons a mulcher on stubble will add five percent and if you avoid want to avoid penalties you need to remove weeds you need to plow after corn potatoes and sugar beets and sugar cane otherwise you lose a 15 percent yield what it doesn't tell you and we will be looking at this in a future video is whether that's based off of a field with nothing in it or a field that is fully conditioned and ready to go. So some of those percentages are obvious and some of them aren't. All right, so here we are back at, on the farm. I've parked our tractors because we're finished with them temporarily. And let's have a quick look around our farm. So we have our grain trailer. 
which we put our crops into yesterday. We have our barn, which really doesn't do too much. Um, there is a basement to it. Some people use that to... It's not really big enough to get a tractor into, but they'll park their pickup or whatever. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is our grain silo. As you can see, the field menu at the bottom right of the screen is telling us about our silo and it's saying we have nothing in it. It's absolutely empty. Whereas if we move it back to the field like we did in the last video, it'll show you what the condition of that field is. Now, we'll take a quick look at silos. Silos all have a different capacity, and as the game goes on, you can buy bigger silos. Silos function a little bit differently in 22 than they have in previous games. In previous games, they had a max capacity, and I'm just going to bring up the menu so we can take a look at this silo and its base capacity. So we're looking for the Farmer OBI 1000 silo. We'll go more into this menu in a few minutes, but right now we just want to look at the bottom and silos. So there is the Farmer 400 OBI 1000. The game tells us it has a maximum capacity of 400,000 liters. The next one up is 500,000 liters. And the next one up is 800,000 liters. There are other silos you can look at later in the game. And we will go into those in more depth. But for now, we're interested in our silo, which has a maximum capacity of 400,000 liters. In previous games, this meant you could put up to 400,000 liters of each product in a silo. In Farming Simulator 22, they've changed the mechanics slightly, and you can now only put a total of 400,000 liters. So, for example, we could put 100,000 liters of wheat... 100,000 liters of barley, 100,000 liters of canola, and 100,000 liters of corn, which gives us our 400,000 liter total. So that's important to learn, no, especially if you're coming from a previous version of the game. Okay, so we also have a garage which looks like a workshop, but doesn't actually do anything. It's purely decorative. We went over the house in the last video. That's your sleep trigger. And a little bit further down the trail, the last thing we have on our farm is a water tank. We don't have any animals yet, and we don't have any greenhouses. So right now, we have no need to purchase water. but we will later on. Okay. So we talked a bit about our tractors. So I think this is a perfect segue into looking at the vehicle shop. You can access the vehicle shop menu either by driving to the vehicle shop, and we showed that in the map on the last video, and we will be driving there again shortly. We'll actually visit it this time. But you can also access the vehicle shop from your farm by simply pressing the P key. Right at the top, it shows you all of the in-brand game, in-game brands, sorry. So if you know a specific piece of equipment you want, you can just scroll through here select a brand and it'll show you everything that's available to purchase from that manufacturer. 
So here is everything in game that is available to purchase from Case International Harvester Agricultural. So we've got a soybean harvester, we've got various cultivators, we've got a baler, tractors, cotton harvesters, and combines. Next, we can actually look at the vehicle menus themselves, and that's broken down into the various pieces of equipment. So if we know we wanted to buy a medium tractor, we just double click on the medium tractors and that'll show you all the tractors available in a certain horsepower range. One of the things we're going to need is we're going to need a plow. So we go down to the tools menu and we can look and see at all the plows available in the game. Below that, this is going to be very important, are items that are available to purchase, either in pallet form, such as solid fertilizer, seeds, and lime. You can also purchase wheat, oats, and pig food. I recommend growing those, because it's very expensive to feed your animals by buying wheat, oats, and pig food. Road salt, depending on whether we get snow in the winter, we may or may not need that. You can also buy big bags. These are a little bit cheaper. Seeds, for example, are $800 for 1,000 liters, whereas in pallets they were $1,000 for 1,000 liters. And I, but again, you can see they pretty much have all the same options to purchase. This is new. This is the packs menu, and it'll show you a range of equipment that you need depending on what you want to grow. So for example, if we wanted to grow a grass field, it'll show you well, it doesn't show you everything because to grow a grass field, you need to make sure it's planted with seed. But it's showing you the basics. If you, you'll need a tractor, you'll need a mower, and you'll need a forage wagon to be able to bring the grass back to the farm. Here, yeah, here's a good one. The little percentage sign shows you what's on sale. Well, the one thing that catches my eye maybe we need this right now and maybe we don't, is a slightly larger cultivator than the one we have. It's only 8,622 to buy because it's being sold at a discount of 64%. Let's go back and see what it would cost us if we were to buy that new. So back to our tools menu and we want cultivators. And I think this is the right one. Yep, five meters. So that's 24,500 at regular price. At 8,000, I think it's a steal. And we are gonna want a slightly larger cultivator for when we expand our farm. Finally, in the vehicle menu, broken down much the same way as it is in the purchase menu, but it shows our owned items. This is broken down into medium tractors. We don't have any small tractors. It shows what harvesters we own by double clicking on it. Cars, trailers, headers, cultivators, you name it. It shows what we own. The final one is leased items. And we don't have anything leased, so there's nothing showing here. And we will go into the advantages of leasing versus buying shortly. And finally, as I said, this is the construction menu. It also allows you to change your wardrobe. You can click on the farmland and it shows you what farmland you own. 
and the animal dealer, if we double click on that, just like we did animals in the other menu, it'll say we don't have any animal pens. We need to purchase one first. So that's the farm menu, sorry, the vehicle menu out of the way. So I've decided we are going to go ahead and we're going to trade in our cultivator for that one that's on sale double the width it'll cut down on the amount of time we spend cultivating a field and if we have an AI worker cultivating a field it'll also cut down on the amount of time that it takes them to cultivate the field which means we pay less so that's kind of important but just be careful you don't want to spend all your money at once Now, if we go back to the garage menu and items we own, cultivators, we could sell the vehicle from here. They're offering 7,000, or the implement from here, they're offering $7,195. It is always better, and I'll show you why, that we take the vehicle to the vehicle shop because we will get a slightly better price from the vehicle dealer. Let's look on the map again. I know off by heart where it is, but let's look on the map and we'll go slightly to the right. There's the vehicle shop that we covered in the last video. So I'm going to take this tractor with this cultivator down to the vehicle shop and I'll see you in a minute. While we're en route, I'm going to show you one more thing. Um, we are parsing the bakery and there is a little easter egg here see this we'll turn on our help menu by pressing f1 we see there's this little toy manure spreader here we're going to collect that and press r each collectible you find on the map is worth a thousand dollars and there are various collectibles on each map. I just discovered this one the other day by accident. I don't know where the rest are. I haven't really gone looking for them, but there are videos on YouTube that will show you where those collectibles are. If you want to go looking for them and in a future video, I'll probably do a couple of videos on collectibles for each map. Okay, here we are at the vehicle dealer. Clever Motors. Okay, so the little basket icon by the door is where we purchase things. Over here, the little wrench icon is where we take our equipment and we can either sell, repair, or repaint our equipment. So we'll park the tractor here. We'll walk over to the wrench, as you can see from the help menu. We'll press R, and that shows the various pieces of equipment we have parked in that rectangle. So it shows that tractor. It needs $40 worth of repair. I'm not going to repair it quite yet because that's not a lot. Remember, if we sold it from our farm, this piece of equipment was going to generate us 71. By selling it through the dealer directly, see the price has gone up to 79.13. And if we spend the $4 to repair it first, it's gone up to 79.17. Obviously, the bigger the vehicle being repaired, the bigger the profit jump is. Repaint. Now, we've hardly used this vehicle, and they want $2,640 for repainting. Even in my main game, I don't bother repainting vehicles because the costs are outrageous, and... 
I'm hoping that's something Giants fixes. But again, that's your choice. If I mean, there is really very little um, value to repainting a vehicle. So it's up to you whether you choose to spend money repainting it. I'd probably only do it on a farm where I'm making millions. And even then, I'm not sure I will. So we want to go ahead and we want to sell this piece of equipment. So we'll hit sell icon. Do I really want to sell it? Yes. If we exit out by pressing escape or the P key, you can see we made $7,917. I'm just going to move my tractor over here. And we'll go up to the dealership and it'll show us the shop by pressing R or we can press P to bring up the same menu. So we want to go to sales and we want to look at this cultivator. It doesn't have any options we can select so it just comes as is. Nice cultivator with a little rolling basket behind it. So let's go ahead and buy this. Yes, we want to buy this. The rest of the equipment we really don't need yet. This is way too big for our farm. We don't have any grass to mow. And we don't really have a need for a cedar yet. We have a planter, but we don't need a seed. The difference between the two is a planter will plant corn, sunflowers, both will plant soybeans, this will plant radish and cotton. Whereas our cedar, if we look in, where is it, the menu here, it'll plant wheat, barley, oats, canola, soybeans, oilseed radish, grass, and sorghum. Those are the crops for now. We're going to stick with it, at least until our farm gets a little bit more mature. So let's press P and exit out of that. Over here beside these two trees are where items get delivered. So we're going to quickly hop back in our tractor. And we're going to connect up to the cultivator. And then we're going to take that cultivator back to our farm. Now, before we go any further, as I said, I was going to show you the advanced AI menu helper. Or the AI, uh, the worker menu, the advanced worker menu. To access that, we press escape. We go to the tractor steering wheel. And it shows us what piece of equipment we have selected and we want to create a job for this so we don't want it to do field work because we've already cultivated our fields so we want it to go to and we're going to set the location as the main farm so again we move the cursor to where we want it to go and it's going to show us we're going to select the point the direction and the cursor will stay there to show us where the vehicle's going to. Then we want to press start job. And if we go back to the main screen, it's going to fold the cultivator and we can get out. And the tractor all by itself is going to go down the road, as you can see. And let's wait here at the farmhouse we'll give it a few minutes and the tractor should show up in our driveway with our brand new cultivator all right one more thing we're going to look at as i said was the advanced menu in the top right of the screen it shows the weather condition which is currently sunny it says we're in August, 
and it tells us the time of the day. We're at 9, 10 in the morning. We can again speed up that time by pressing the 7 and 8 key. And finally, it tells us how much money we have. Yes, we can get all that information by going into the main menu. For example, hit the weather forecast. We know it's sunny and we know we're in August. And here comes our tractor now. It's turning in and we should get a message as soon as it parks that the job's being completed. So let's go jump in the tractor. We'll unfold. We need to start the engine, sorry. We need to unfold the cultivator so we can detach it from the tractor. And I'm gonna park it because we don't need it right now. I'm gonna park beside the other tractor with the cedar on it. And because we're gonna use that tractor for something else in the next video, I'm gonna press Q to detach it and it's detached. So for now, let's turn the tractor off. We'll get out and I see we're at the 30 minute mark. So that's all we're gonna cover in this video. Stay tuned for part three and we'll look at contracts and we'll also look at what to do with our farm next. I hope you found this information useful and we'll see you in the next video.